welcome back to the AI for Good Global Summit here in Geneva, where I'm now joined by Stefan German, who is the CEO of the Fondation Botna, Swiss Space Foundation. Have I got the, oh, am I correct so far? Absolutely correct. Okay, it could, it'll go downhill from here. But anyway, tell me, people who don't know, what is the Botna Foundation? So Fondation Botnar is a Swiss-based foundation that has a strategic focus on how to leverage AI and frontiers digital technologies to improve the health and well-being of uh, young people, specifically adolescents. And then most adolescents today are living in urban settings, so we have a particular focus on cities, young people in cities. But I thought that cities in particular are, are the privileged ones. They're the ones who actually have the doctors, who have access to hospitals and healthcare. They're, they're not the. It's more rural areas which are ha facing the suffering. I think that's actually slightly a misconception. Whilst there is sort of issues, in, definitely issues in terms of access in rural areas, and where sort of uh, digital sort of solutions like teleprimary health or AI-enabled diagnostics will make a tremendous effort. There's major issues within many of the urban settings in terms of accessing. So even if you look within an, in an urban setup, especially in low and middle income countries, a lot of people in the disadvantaged community still struggle tremendously to access health services. And a lot of the current sort of uh, primary services are totally overcrowded because the majority of people, and they stated that up to 90% of people going into the clinical settings and seeing GPs actually don't need to go there in the first place. And that's where really the power of AI comes in, in terms of decision support, in terms of diagnostics, in the space of self-care, pre-primary care, and then as well uh, primary care settings. You, you take, for example, the NHS in the, in the UK, even in the UK, they did a couple of years back uh, a massive survey of millions of people who went into the NHS system and about 90% of those would not really need to go if they would have adequate sort of information to, to take the right self-care decision or the pre-primary sort of primary care decision. And what happens then is that we are burdening the, the very sort of stretched health systems and the limited resources with things that really don't need to be dealt with. And that's where we sort of see tremendous power of AI. And so we just had, we are a partner of the AI for Good Summit. And we had a partners workshop this morning that's still going on whilst I'm here. And it focuses on how can we use smart AI and integrate it into community health systems. And the key is really integration. At the moment, one of the problems is there's a lot of fragmentation. We have a thousand and one apps that is sort of trying to build in machine learning at the back end, but it's quite fragmented. Of course, people listening to what you're saying now will say, oh, actually, you're finding solutions to make healthcare even cheaper because you're not, if 90% of the time they don't have to go for a checkup, I mean, uh, the administrators of hospitals will go, this is great news. Exactly, I mean, there is a, is a cost uh, factor. Uh, however, on the terms of the tools to actually measure the cost effectiveness, specifically in the digital health space, is still quite weak. One of our panelists is from the World Bank, and they are actually working at the moment together with a group of donors in the digital health space, looking at what is sort of the methodology to establish a return on investment for health-related digital solutions. That's absolutely critical because if I'm the Minister of Health, let's say, in Zimbabwe, I, I, you spend a lot of time in Zimbabwe and health, and, and I know sort of what I buy with $1 worth of, of antibiotics, but I don't quite know what I get with $1 worth of AI or digital health. And so I think to really get that to scale and to have public money starting to invest into AI solutions, we really need to invest in finding ways to get a good sort of sense on the economic benefit of it. I think also, just having talked to other people who are in the healthcare area of AI, you have to harmonize all of you Absolutely. together, right? Yeah. Now, there's a lot of issues, especially on the data side, uh, but there is actually a, a grouping now for, I can't remember how many, but more than a hundred sort of actors globally that have endorsed the principles for digital development. I'm on the advisory council of this, uh, this, this, this effort on principle of digital development. These are nine principles. 
and some of them are really about the interoperationability which has to do with the question of harmonization. So on the data side, and, and I think people underestimate that AI is incredibly data hungry. But if we look at sort of the future, let's say 20 years from now, what is happening at the moment is sort of three convergence technologies. The first one being a data explosion from social media to wearables, clinical data, genomics, geospatial data, environmental data. Huge explosion, all having to do with health and well-being. On the other hand, we have increasingly sophistication of, of AI technologies with uh, natural language processing, we'll, we'll make advances in deep learning, and then in the next 30 years we will see supercomputing, maybe one day even quantum computing, which is 100 million times faster. So put that together. We will have for the first time in human history an unprecedented understanding of well-being. However, the big issue is data and data governance. And unless we get together as a global community and figure out how we deal with health data governance, and as a foundation, we strongly believe that health data should be a global public good. Okay, and just finally, you're a partner of the AI for Global Good. Um, has it been worth it? Absolutely. No, I mean, if we, if we take sort of, uh, we've been here now the third time, and it's the third time it, it runs. And I must say, I mean, it was great to start with, but this year is like really in terms of not only number of people, but as well in terms of substance uh, of the conference has been phenomenal. And we definitely will be here next year again and probably step up our engagement with the ITU. We just became actually an affiliated member of the ITU, which is good news. The Swiss government who needs to approve these affiliation uh, for if you're a Swiss entity just approved that last week so we're really pleased to work with the IT on that. Okay well that was Stefan German of the Fondation Botna CEO and um, from what he just said he'll be back here next year. Thank you. Thank you.